From work time to fun time, Azure Cosmos DB powers the apps that power your day. Rise and shine with personalized mobile and online experiences powered by Azure Cosmos DB. You get your Starbucks coffee your way. Gas up and go. Real-time vehicle diagnostics let you know if your connected car is low on fuel. Going up, no time to take the stairs. Predictive maintenance means a smooth and safe ride to the 10th floor. Sign in, say hi. The consistent reliability of Microsoft Teams keeps the collaboration going wherever you are, using Azure Cosmos DB as the primary data store. Learn something new. Built on Azure Cosmos DB, ChatGPT's always ready to answer your questions and converse with context. See who called. Secure storage means your AT&T voicemails are ready when you are. Order up. What were the groceries you ordered last week? Walmart makes reorders easy with all transactions served by Azure Cosmos DB. Check your balance. Fidelity's secure real-time transaction processing means real-time financial management. Finally, vacation. No sitting on the tarmac for you. Azure Cosmos DB powers fuel management for JetBlue. Your modern life is built on modern apps. And modern, intelligent apps are built on Azure Cosmos DB. Well, hello, hello, and welcome to our session about Azure. Thank you, thank you. About Azure Cosmos DB in the air of AI. I'm Kirill Gavriluk. I lead product management and engineering for Azure Cosmos DB. And I come with quite a bit of help. Uh, now, Thank you guys for coming. Cosmos DB is all about apps, and today the session is all about apps. How many of you are developers out there? I'm in the right place. And how many of you are already using Cosmos DB? Awesome, thank you for your request units. Now, every organization, every company on the planet today is looking for ways to add AI to their apps to increase business value. But AI only can only provide as much value as the data that it is using. So the question is, is your data ready for AI transformation? Or more precisely, is your database ready? Intelligent apps want AI to reason over non-structured, semi-structured data. Let's face it, we don't need AI to reason about a table of numbers. Database query engines are really good at it. We want AI to reason about natural language, about semi-structured data, unstructured data. That's where the value comes from. Intelligent apps work with lots of data to provide the best user experience. The more data we know about the user, the more data we know about the context, the better experience the app can give. So database needs to be able to serve large volumes of data. Now, customers expect really fast, always on experiences. That requires data to be served in real time. Apps need real database to provide real time, low latency, guaranteed, no matter the scale. If you have large volume, of real-time data. That means spiky traffic. You don't have a luxury to buffer or delay. That means database needs to be always ready to scale with traffic instantly without delays to serve the customer at the moment where the data is needed. These are just some of the attributes that every intelligent app needs out of the database. Data is variable. Data comes in high volume, variable traffic. The app needs data in real time, no delays. And the data the experiences are served to the users wherever they are, often globally distributed. So your data often also needs to be globally distributed without delays. Azure Cosmos DB from the ground up was built for intelligent apps. 
even before AI really existed. Azure Cosmos DB is purpose-built for semi-structured data, highly variable data. Azure Cosmos DB has built a number of AI capabilities built in, and we'll talk about them later in the session. It provides low latency, instantly scaling for any volume of traffic without limits, and provides performance guarantees. It is flexible, and it provides five nines availability SLA for mission critical applications. Now, let's start with scale. Instant, limitless auto scale has been a signature capability of Cosmos DB for some time. And I would like to invite Maria Polante, Executive Vice President from Bond Brand Loyalty, to share her experiences with Cosmos DB scale and AI capabilities. Thank you, Maria. Thanks, Kirill. As you heard, Cosmos allows for significant scaling and addresses a number of needs. I'm going to quickly touch on four topics. First, why we chose Cosmos in our architecture. Second, how we manage it. Third, an AI use case we're excited about. And lastly, I'll share three tips for those adopting or considering Cosmos in their, their technology stack. Before I do that, let me give you a bit of background on Bond. As our name suggests, we are in the business of building bonds for our clients with their employees, their channels, and customers. We do this by designing, building, and operating customer engagement and loyalty solutions. Our technology powers some of the largest loyalty programs in the world. It's with this context, I hope you can understand some of the requirements that we have. So when we chose Cosmos, for our architecture, it was because it satisfied some key business requirements for us. The first one being that we needed to deliver real-time experiences across the customer journey. If you think about a loyalty or rewards program, think about all those moments along that journey. Enrollment, customer identification in store or online, getting your points, getting your rewards, getting personalized offers. The expectation is real-time. The second reason we chose Cosmos was that it could handle volume and scale for our needs. It could handle thousands of requests per second, whether reading or writing information into the database. And lastly, we knew it could support our innovation roadmap and our, our plans for the future, including generative AI. We take advantage of Cosmos in a number of places within our platform architecture. Because of this, we use different management approaches. Auto-scaling is especially beneficial for unpredictable spikes in volume. This is especially beneficial with retail clients, where you might send out a promotion and there's un unexpected volume. That can be the, the best kind of surprise, but you want to have the technology that supports you. On the right-hand side, I've included some reference to the number of documents and requests that we handle on behalf of our clients, just to give you a sense of how Cosmos supports us. In the graph, you'll also see that we've set a minimum threshold that can spike to 10 times that with auto scale. This ensures that we're optimizing performance while containing our costs. And where? volume is predictable, we take advantage of manual management, and we schedule increases and decreases in RUs based on those needs. In this example, what you're seeing is scheduling across based on time of day. And of course, our teams are constantly monitoring. We have to ensure that we are optimizing performance while containing costs. And in this example, what you see here is that we have we haven't hit the minimum, or we've only hit the minimum 10 to 15% of the time. This means we need to tune and adjust our approach. So with that Cosmos Foundation, you may be wondering, how are we exploring generative AI? And in addition to leveraging Copilot in our development and testing efforts, we're leveraging Azure services and integrating those into our solutions. I've included some examples here but I want to dive into one particular use case. 
and this is for retail specifically. In this instance, retailers were asking us to help them accelerate, get insights into what their competitors were doing from a promotional perspective. Leveraging OpenAI and AI vision, we were able to extract this information from digital flyers and emails and bring value to our clients in hours rather than weeks. Imagine a person previously having to do all of that work manually. This allows us to focus in on value generating activities so that we can focus in on insights and recommendations that our clients can act on. To wrap up, I have three tips. First, plan. To take advantage of horizontal scaling, you need to think about your partition strategy and your partition key is central to that. You need to think about your read and write ratio in order to optimize for compute and manage your costs. And while a NoSQL database is different, there are similarities to standard data management techniques apply. You need to think about your data schema design, your index strategy, again, to manage and optimize for performance. These decisions are critical to plan for at the beginning because undoing them or changing these later, later can be challenging. It's not impossible, but you should expect Expect it to be effortful. And second, you can't set it and forget it. You have to monitor and tune again to make sure you're optimizing performance while containing your costs. And lastly, if you're just starting your generative AI journey, you can start and test with low risk, high impact use cases. There are ways to leverage Azure services to test these things responsibly while gaining a lot of value. Thank you. Back to Kirill. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. These are really valuable tips, and I want to draw your attention to two of them. Planning for Cosmos DB. Cosmos DB provides out of scale today, right? And more than 70% of Cosmos DB usage today is served by Autoscale. It really takes a headache away, and customers like it and use it. However, planning for exactly for the right partition key to distribute your data is critical with Cosmos DB. More importantly, customers need to monitor and tune because it is cost effective if you are able to distribute your workload across your partitions key space evenly. But if over time, one of the partition keys becomes busier, Cosmos DB scales all partitions to that level. That may be costly. That requires you tuning. That's the remaining headaches that we want to take away. I'm really excited to announce today we're taking Cosmos DB out of scale to the next level. We're announcing dynamic out of scaling per region, per partition. Let me illustrate what this means. On the left side, you see a chart representing a simple workload, two partitions. And this workload uses two regions. Second region is added for disaster recovery and high availability purposes. As you can see, one of the partitions is busier than the other. One partition takes 500 request units per second. For those of you not familiar with Cosmos DB, this is the main currency, so to speak, the main measure of traffic, in individual, what individual requests take to process. The other partition takes 200 request units per second. Today, Cosmos DB out of scale will scale instantly to this workload. However, it will scale all partitions across all regions to the level that is needed by the most busiest partition, the red line on the left chart. So if you don't control this, don't contain this, that can add up over time, especially if you have many, uh, large amount of data, many partitions. With today's announcement, dynamic per region per partition out of scale, scales individual partitions to what they need. And we only bill you for what 
the sum of what each partition consume. So if you have a workload and one partition is busier than the other, you only, we only scale partition, each partition to individual levels that is sufficient to serve the traffic, the red line. And if you added a region and you only use that region for disaster recovery, no longer you need to, the region to be maintained to provisioned at the same capacity as your primary. It will be only provisioned individual partitions to what they need to consume for data replication. That's very crucial. With this announcement, disaster recovery is a small addition in your cost profile. High availability is a small addition in your, in your overall cost profile of the database. And you don't need to, you still need to remember about partition keys. And partition key is still an important choice. But you don't have to endure the headache as much or at all over time. Once you chose, choose it more or less, uh, providing reasonable distribution, Cosmos, the rest database will take care of it for you. You don't have to invest so much time in optimizing your app. We will optimize your workload on your behalf on the database side. This capability is available today to all new database accounts. You can go to the portal and uh, enable it in the Features tab. As we work out the kinks and uh, get closer to making this generally available, we'll make it available to all database accounts. Cosmos DB Instant Scaling is used by one of the companies, OpenAI. It's an interesting company. OpenAI grew from zero to hundreds of millions of users in the matter of months and had not, did not have to make any changes to their database. The database just scaled elastically, automatically, magically. That's the power of the auto, auto scale and horizontal partitioning. Your AI powered apps can do that too. But there is more to the database uh, when it comes to AI applications. As we mentioned, Cosmos DB was built for semi-structured data, the type of data that AI applications want to, uh, AI to reason on. A very critical pattern when you're building uh, an app using AI is retrieval augmented generation, RAG. Every one of us had to learn how to pronounce this acronym over the last year. RAG is important. And the key component, the key requirement on the data store, whether it's a database or something else, is to ability to index your data so that you can do a similarity search and fetch the most relevant data and feed it to the AI to not exceed those token limits. That's a very important pattern. Cosmos DB, with two of its APIs, MongoDB Core and Postgres API, support this vector indexing, vector search built in into the database. And very particular way, it's built in into the engine. It is not running on a separate node. It is runs directly in the same query engine. So you don't need to pay extra. You don't need to move the data to another service. There is no data management or data consistency challenges. Your embeddings, your vectors, and your data are all in the same database, always consistent. And you can do vector, uh, and a database makes sure, ensures vector indexing so that you can do your RAG pattern efficiently. Now, other APIs, like our core API, NoSQL API, does not have this, that capability built in, but we have turnkey integration with a wonderful AI search service, formerly known as Azure Cognitive Search, that does it for you. It is built, purpose built for. Uh, for search, it has built-in vector indexing using state-of-the-art algorithms, and it can index data no matter where it comes from, whether it's database, whether it's blob. So to think about it, if your database has uh, vector indexing built-in and your data is in the database, using built-in capability is a no-brainer because you don't have to move data anywhere, you don't have to worry about data consistency, data management, etc. And it's efficient and performant at scale because databases are really good at it. Now, if your data is spread across many data states, if it's in the blob storage, et cetera, 
Azure Cognitive Search, Azure AI Search is fantastic because it's built for search and it has a state-of-the-art algorithms with it. Coming soon, we will add native vector search capability into the core NoSQL API as well. Not everyone uses MongoDB API. We will have this, and as we do that, it will come with the high performance, limitless scale. It will be great for multi-tenant apps. It will be built directly in the engine. It won't be running on separate nodes as other databases do it. It's built in, it scale, scales horizontally, it's serverless, uh, very cost efficient, and comes with the same performance, reliability, characteristics, and elasticity that you come to grow to expect from Cosmos DB. Now, I would like to invite Robert Finlayson from KPMG to show you how KPMG used Cosmos DB for MongoDB API with built-in vector search to build their generative AI-powered applications. This is so cool, thanks. My name is Robert, and I'm a product manager at KPMG Australia. And today, I'm introducing you to Kim Chat, our generative AI agent. What do you wonder is a key component in creating generative AI agents? Do you think it's knowledge ingestion? Do you think it's the AI service model? Or do you think it's knowledge retrieval? I'm going to share our journey with Kim Chat and the insights which we learnt to help you answer this today. Our vision for KimChat was simple, to create an AI agent that could ingest internal knowledge in a safe and secure way to explore the art of the possible with AI. We needed KimChat to be highly precise, to meet our performance expectations, and to scale across the KPMG global member firm network. Our initial architecture leveraged Azure Search for Knowledge Retrieval and Azure OpenAI for the AI service model. As we started to ingest more content and knowledge, we were faced with some emerging challenges. Performance started to slow down, the response text degraded, and we measured this with the KPMG Prompt Confidence Index. That's a key metric we use when we look at generative AI apps. We updated and refreshed all the components. Of course, nothing worked <laughs> until we looked into knowledge retrieval and we introduced Azure Cosmos for MongoDB v Core. And let me show you how that went with a demonstration of KimChat. Okay, uh, welcome to Kim Chat. I'll do a product tour to start with. In the bottom part of our screen is the prompt input. On the right-hand side of our screen is the prompt knowledge base. These are the best of the best prompts across KPMG. We've got a new chat button, and then we've got AI personas. This is how we segment data leveraging Cosmos v Core with multiple vector indexes. I'm gonna skip out of the tour right now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to, into the uh, prompt knowledge base, and today I'm going to get Kim Chat to be a social media marketer. I'm going to get it to leverage KPMG for leadership to be able to create a social media post executing a vector search in Cosmos v Core. It's done that, it's provided the citations, so how about transparency, how that was generated. I mentioned AI personas before. This isn't just our way to add personalities. We segment data with AI personas. Our default persona is Integra, representing one of the key values of KPMG. We've got many other personas. The best way for me to show this is I'll go into Authentica. It doesn't have any KPMG knowledge. I'll put a prompt in about a recent event which has occurred. It won't have any knowledge about that event or any correct knowledge anyway. I'm going to switch my persona back to Integra using the exact same prompt I'm going to put in here. And it's going to execute that vector search. It's going to put the results into Open Azure OpenAI 
and then it'll start to generate the response. That's going to go on for a while because we've got a lot of thought leadership. And the key is we've been able to um, create this um, with uh, Cosmos V Core. So certainly what we found was the key component in creating generative AI applications is knowledge retrieval. By using Cosmos V Core, we increased the precision from 50% up to 90% um, as measured by the Prompt Confidence Index. Our performance improved and we scale across the global network of KPMG member firms. If you want to get more insights into how we built KimChat, I invite you to join me tomorrow for the session of creating your own ChatGBT experience with enterprise data. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much, Thanks, George. <laughs> it's amazing to see what customers are able to build with AI and their knowledge base. Everyone has their values, their knowledge base, and the database that, that is built for semi-structured data, the database that has AI capabilities integrated, integrated vector indexing, vector search, provides you precise, relevant data to AI to make AI relevant, valuable. It increases uh, efficiency of your staff. It increases, it increases uh, custom, improves customer experience. Now, Robert mentioned Cosmos DB for Mongo v Core. This is a product that we are really excited about. This is a new member of Cosmos DB family, and today we are announcing general availability of Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB v Core. It's a different engine. It has a cluster form factor. It offers the ability to scale up and then scale out. It is optimized for rich queries, for long-running transactions, long-running queries unlike Cosmos DB core RU engine. Just think about which to use when. If you have high volume of relatively simple queries, if you need that instant auto scale, if you need limitless scale, five nines availability, and other attributes that you grow to love with Cosmos DB, Cosmos DB RU stack is that. If you have rich queries, rich transactions, that require scale up of individual partition, to scale up your individual partitions, MongoDB v Core is a great engine for that. It will come with the same uh, scale out, it will come with the same uh, availability, reliability that you are accustomed to expect from Cosmos DB. It comes with enterprise features like private link at GA. It also implements MongoDB API, the API developers love. We're all grateful for MongoDB API to exist. And we implement it, and it's very high compatibility, so it enables very easy migrations of your existing MongoDB databases, for example, to MongoDB v Core. But it also has built-in vector capability, unique for Cosmos DB for, for Mongo v Core. It is built into the query engine. It is not a side thing. It doesn't run on a separate node. You don't pay for it extra. It is built in, no extra, no extra price, no extra charge, runs on your data, no data movement is needed, internode or out of the service. It has all the integrations with all the popular AI frameworks like link chain, semantic kernel. It has all the uh, popular algorithms for vector indexing, including HNSW, et cetera. And it's integrated with Azure OpenAI Studio. So with, I would like to invite our fearless product leader, Mark Brown, on stage to demo you how to use, build exciting AI-powered apps with Mon Cosmos DB for MongoDB and Azure OpenAI. Thank you, Kirill. I'm really excited to be up here. Uh, in the next five minutes, I'm going to show you how you can create an AI experience using Azure AI Studio with data stored in Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore. We're going to create a simple experience at first, but then I'm going to show you how you can take this and customize this even further, help bring your brand closer to your customers, help better support your customers, and better connect with them. And we'll do it without writing a single line of code. So let's get started. And it all starts with your data. So here we have a product catalog here in our MongoDB for vCore uh, collection. And I've got the kind of stuff you would expect to see in here. I've got category names and SKUs, 
names, descriptions, price. I also have a property in here for our vector arrays. So I've taken all of this data that's in here, and I've used Azure OpenAI to generate vectors on this, and I am storing this and indexing this right here in our MongoDB collection. So this is our data for our product catalog, and we're gonna create a retail AI assistant for our Cosmic Works Bike company, and we're gonna help it provide product recommendations to customers who are looking for the products that they wanna buy. So let's start here in Azure AI Studio. We'll click on the Bring Your Data Now, and we'll select our data source. We've got Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore. We'll connect this to our database account that we've got. So I'll just fill in a little bit of information here and a password, very secure. And it's taking a little longer than I want. All right, database name. So I'm gonna select my retail database. I'm gonna select my products collection because we wanna build something to do product recommendations against this. We'll select our vector index. I'm gonna select an embedding model here so that we can do our query. Uh, I need to provide data back to Azure AI to say what properties they wanna bring back and I need to tell it what our vector property is here. So that's it, that's all the configuration. I'll save and close this. And here in like 45 seconds, I'm able to create a chat experience that is connected or grounded with our data in Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore. So I could start right here and start writing questions and start testing whether our data is gonna work or not. But I wanna create something a little more custom, if you will. I wanna create something to help connect with my customers. So I've created a little character and I've called him Wheelie. Uh, I even went to Dolly and I said, hey, create me an image for our little retail AI assistant. He's fun and energetic and he really loves bikes and wanna help people connect people to bikes and biking accessories. So there's Wheelie right there, no relation to Clippy. Uh, and to do this, we need to do a few things in here. So we're gonna create a system message that's gonna to help define what Wheelie behaves like. So we'll give him a name. We're gonna say, here's what you are, here's what you're gonna do, here's what you're like, and this is what you're gonna behave like. So we'll go ahead and create our little system message in here. I also wanna have a little fun and interaction uh, with us uh, and Wheelie here. So I'm gonna use uh, this preview feature in here with the text-to-speech inside the chat studio here. Uh, and let's give it a test. So the first thing I wanna do is let's test Wheelie. So we're gonna test the system message here and just see what Wheelie is like. Hi, my name is Mark and I'm here with my friend Kirill. How are you today? Oh, sorry, I forgot. Wheelie likes to think. I gotta do this part. Hello, Mark and Carol. I'm Wheelie your friendly AI assistant. I'm always ready to help you find the best bikes and accessories. How can I assist you today? Well, that's good, Carol. <laughs> Let's see if we can have him recommend a bike uh, and see how well he's grounded to our data here. Uh, hey, Wheelie, I'd like to bike or buy a bike for my friend Kirill here. Uh, he likes riding on the forest trails around the Microsoft campus, very rugged trails. Uh, also, I expect I'm gonna get a huge raise after this demo here, so money is no object. I want you to go ahead and recommend the most expensive bike you got. What can you tell me? Hello there, Mark. It sounds like you're ready for some serious biking adventures. For rugged trails, I'd recommend our top-of-the-line mountain bike, the Cosmic Works Galaxy wow. MTB Pro. This bike is designed for the toughest terrains with its full suspension system, hydraulic disc brakes, and carbon fiber frame. It's perfect for those forest trails you mentioned. The Cosmic Works Galaxy MTB Pro is our most expensive bike, priced at $10,000. It's worth every penny for the performance and durability it offers. Would you like to know more about this bike or any other accessories that might enhance your biking experience? Wow, that's quite a nice recommendation there. Uh... They've gotta be a Good raise. It better be a good raise, yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> well, he's grounded to our data here. Uh, let's ask him another question, just in case. Uh, Wheelie, thank you very much. Uh, can you recommend maybe some socks for Kirill, just in case this demo bombs and I don't get that big raise? Absolutely, Mark. It's always a good idea to have some quality cycling socks for those long rides. They can help keep your feet dry and comfortable. Our Cosmic Works Performance Cycling Socks are a great choice. 
They're made with a breathable, moisture-wicking fabric and have a reinforced heel and toe for durability. They're priced at $20 a pair. And since money is no object, why not consider our Cosmic Works premium cycling shoes? They're designed for optimal power transfer and comfort with a stiff sole and adjustable fit. They're priced at $200. Both of these would make a great addition to your biking gear. Uh, would you I, like to know more about these or uh, any other accessories? Yeah, I sure would. Uh, so here, Wheelie's upselling me, uh, apparently, on more yeah, stuff right. inside of our catalog. So I'm really liking the performance of my retail AI assistant here. This Wheelie is really, really doing a great job. I'm not too sure about the raise, though. Uh, so this is all here, right here in the chat studio, in, or the, in the chat playground in Azure AI Studio. I didn't write a single line of code. And I've got this chat experience with my custom retail AI assistant, my friend Wheelie here connected to our product data, making product recommendations using a natural language input. I can take and run with this and test and prototype, but I can also take and deploy this into a little web app. So I can click this deploy to here. I can enter in a name, some more information. I can also enable the chat, ha uh, chat history here in the web app. And doing this is gonna create a new Cosmos account and I'm gonna store all of my chat history in here, which is really super important if you're building these generative AI applications. You wanna store those interactions. You'd like to know what Wheelie is recommending to your customers and what they're asking for in there. So this is a super important uh, piece to be able to do in there. And clicking that and deploying the app, you get a really nice little clean UI experience here. You can go and you can test further on this. Or in my case, I wanted to customize this even further. So I've gone and added a little graphic in here for my friend Wheelie. I've branded it up at the top here. Uh, and I can go and I can share this uh, and use this even in a production environment I want. And I've done zero code for this. This was just adding some graphics in, modifying a CSS, and deploy it, and that's it. That's very cool, Mark. So is Wheelie is gonna be in that website now? Well, I mean, the graphic is, but the Wheelie up there, no, he's not there. Uh, it's probably for the best. He doesn't know how to pronounce my name. But... Carol. Um, oh hey, Kirill, I'm still here, you know, just saying. We live in the era of AI, everyone. AI is with us no matter we want it or not. This is the new AGI right here, it's Wheelie, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. It's a fantastic demo. And so we've built, we've shown you how Cosmos DB helps you build very creative, powerful AI-powered applications. We ourselves use AI as well. We use it to operate Cosmos DB today in our operational life site. We also excited to announce Microsoft Copilot for Azure in Cosmos DB to help you write Cosmos DB queries. This does natural language to Cosmos DB query translation. And it will be available in Data Explorer for you to use free of charge. It's just a tool, part of developer experience and just an example of how AI helps all of us provide more value to our customers. In this case, us providing more value to you. It uses, powered by Azure OpenAI large language models. It, your data and your usage are protected. We do not train our models. OpenAI does not train their models on your data. It's all secured. And development of this copilot was built following strict guidelines of Microsoft responsible AI principles. And we will share how we've built it, how we do it on our end at scale to serve the traffic. This is just the beginning. And I'd like to invite James Codella, our product manager for AI capabilities in Cosmos DB, to demonstrate you this new copilot that is already available in Data Explorer today. Cool. Thanks, Kirill. Hey, everyone. I am super excited to share with you today Microsoft Copilot for Azure and Azure Cosmos DB. So it's this great AI capability that turns your natural language questions about your data into Cosmos DB NoSQL queries. So what I have here is I have the data explorer for my Cosmos DB resource, and I see something new. I see a query faster with Copilot card. If I click this, it will take me to a sandbox environment, a sample data set that we've set up for you at no charge, where you can get used to playing with and uh, get accustomed to the Copilot experience or I can jump right into the query editor and start generating queries. So let's give that a try. I have my sample database here, and I have a sample collection, this movie uh, collection. So I'm gonna say, create a new SQL query. And I see the query editor that we all know and love, but now I see the Copilot experience up above it. So let's try it out. Uh, let's ask it a question. Let's say, 
Um, show me the first 10 items of my collection sorted by the year uh, it was released. So this is a list of movies. Uh, I want to just get it familiar with what the, uh, what the data looks like. So I'll ask Copilot to generate a query, and I'll see a couple of things pop up in the query editor when it's done. I'll see the query that is generated by Copilot. I'll see a natural language, uh, easy to understand explanation of the query. And then I'll also see the prompt that I entered for reference. I can go ahead and execute that query and see the results that I would expect down here in the results pane. So that's kind of a simple example. Let's try something a little bit more complex. So what movies have James Bond in the overview that were also shot in France? And only show me the movie name and the year it was produced. And we'll ask Copilot to create a query for us. And this looks pretty good, right? I can see a, a more complicated query. I can see it uses a subquery. Um, and I can see this great extended explanation of the query. We'll execute it. And I can see, OK, there were two James Bond movies shot in France, A View to Kill, and Moonraker. So that's awesome. Like, this looks great. So I'm going to give a thumbs up feedback to the product team. Uh, I'll give a little bit more feedback here. Uh, this was awesome. And I'll submit that. Please now, all do so. <laughs> now, if I have generated a query, and I think maybe it could do a little bit better of job, I can give a thumbs down and give additional information to the Microsoft product team. And we'll use this to help make Copilot an even better experience for you. So Copilot is available today as a preview feature. You can go to your Azure subscription and enable it as a preview feature. And as Kirill said, it's available at no extra cost. So give it a try. Uh, go play with it. And let us know what you think. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much, James. James Cadala. Now, this is just the beginning of our journey. This copilot may not get the query exactly right every possible time. I think the test shows 90 to 95 percent accuracy, which is pretty good compared to where we started. It will get only better. But this capability of natural language to query processing is very powerful. You can expect us over time to offer it through API, through other services, and used in, in applications. Uh, many, we know many customer applications that takes query as part of the experience. And now you don't have to, you can use natural language, which is more uh, natural for humans. Now, this is a holiday season, and it's only appropriate to end this presentation with a gift. Today, starting today, for every one of you, we have Azure AI Advantage free offer, up to $6,000 worth of Azure Cosmos DB. Please use it. Please spend your holiday productively, build some great apps with this ample amount of Cosmos DB, and tell us about it. I can't wait to hear more of, about the apps you will build. You have, there are plenty of resources. We have a number of great sessions, and we have Couple minutes to take maybe a couple questions. And I'd like to invite Mark and James on stage to help me. And we may have a question prompt. I think you Maybe you got a question for Wheelie. <laughs> if not, we'll take from the audience. Yes, please. Excellent question. So the question is, many developers struggle picking the right partition key. We have partition key advisor in private preview available, and it's going to be public uh, pretty soon. Uh, we have plenty of guidance and documentation up front helping you to do that. And the advisor will make it even easier for you. We are now starting to give recommendations as we see what the queries you, we, uh, we are serving. We give you recommendations of a better partition key. Uh, the partition key will be mutable. Tune in for more announcements. And with the dynamic out of scale per partition per region, the choice of partition key does not be, have to be as precise. 
we do give you a, a lot of leeway now with this new capability. So you can, your partitions cannot, may not be completely balanced, and it's okay because we only charge you for the, we only uh, we scale each partition individually and only charge you for the sum. So that's a lot. The choice of partition key is not as critical uh, to make Cosmos DB cost effective for you. Thank you. I'm reminded we're out of time. Thank you so much for coming, uh, joining us today. Uh, there are more sessions, and uh, please stay tuned and enjoy Ignite. Thank you.